All right, shalom, hello, and welcome. Today we are going to go over praise and worship. As you can tell here, what is this? Is this a concert or is this a church? It's to the point where we can't really tell anymore. And why should that be? Why should we be like them? Because that draws them in. That's what we hear, right? That's what draws the people in. Deuteronomy 12 and 4 says, Do not worship Yahweh, your Elohim, in the way these pagan peoples worship their gods. Hmm. So why do we do it again? I would submit to you we do it because we like to. We like me. We want to do it for me. It gives me my emotional fix. It gives me my emotional time. It gives me my emotional high. I get to go to church and I get to feel like I'm somebody. Right? I get to dance and sing and prance and boy, wow, it's so great. It feels so good. I can't wait to get back and dance and sing. And that's what happens a lot of times. We go and we get our emotional high, but we don't really know what's going on. We don't really get what's supposed to be happening. Again, we go to the Like Me seminar and we hit thumbs up because that was a great song and we tell you know, Amanda, how she sung the song just so sweet, and how, oh boy, Sarah, you just bless my soul, and all these things that should we even be saying, right? But it's all again about like me, like what I do, like what I say, like what I sing. But what does the scripture say? We have 102 verses of worship, 216 verses on praise. Imagine that out of all these and all we usually ever hear to justify is dance like David danced. Right? That's about the only verses are Deborah Shuka Tamborel or something like that is usually what you get is to justify why we dance and sing and prance and go on in the assembly. But it might surprise you to find out every word in there is not what you think it is. Let's go Genesis 22 and 5. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. The word here, worship. So just without going any further, digging any deeper, but we will, he leaves them there and goes to worship the Creator. So what's going on here? What's going on? He's going to worship the Creator, but he leaves them there. So it's not the same concept that we see, is it? That worship is 7812. That means to what? bow down, to kneel. The thing about the scriptures is not everything is worship is worship. That's what we think. Praise is praise. But when we take these words, we have to know what they mean, and we should know what's being said. Praise is H1984. Hello. It's a celebration. What? Yeah, a celebration. Thanksgiving. Harvest. I wonder when we should do something like that. Probably on Sukkot. Judges 5 and 3. We have the H2168. The Zarnar. The striking of the fingers. Does it sound like the same thing we do in, in churches, right? To truly praise him is to do what? To tell him. How do you praise anybody else? Do you walk up and walk around them and sing and dance and act that way around somebody? Or do you tell them, thank you? Thank you for what you've done. If somebody gave you the keys to the car, what would you tell them? Thank you. How do you come to the king? You kneel down. What is he talking about right here? <clears throat> let the verse, let the scriptures define the scriptures. If we let the scriptures define the scriptures, we will come to what it's saying. 
when we let men and wolves and hirelings do it, we get a dancing, prancing thing that is not even like what we should be seeing. And Abraham said unto his young men, now why wouldn't he bring his young men and say, come on guys, we're going to go out here and dance and prance and act like a bunch of idiots. Because that ain't what they was doing, right? I mean, the verse itself, in itself shows you it's nothing what we see in church. It's nothing that we see in a concert. Abide you here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And he said unto Moshe, Come up unto Yahweh, thou and Aaron, Nibad, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. So what are they doing? They're kneeling down. They're paying homage. He said, my house is a house of what? Prayer. Not abominable, nasty, terrible things. A house of prayer. A house of coming to him. A house of doing it his way. Why do we not see this? Because the scripture again defines and tells us. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And thou shalt no priest to me, shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of Yahweh. I will also forget thy children. Imagine that. So in our prancing and dancing and playing around, we get ourselves into trouble. I would submit to you this is why so many people are praying and trying to get their life straight because what? They're not doing things correctly and not even in the assembly are they doing it correctly. How much severe punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the son of Elohim? and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, and has insulted the spirit of grace. You tell me that's not insulting to come and do something that the Father and the Son said not to do. How are we different than those who came and did it their way? How are we a bit different? They was selling things. They was doing what they wanted to do. They was having what they wanted to do. How are we different than that? How does our church look any different than what they was doing? Would we not be worse than they are? Honestly, would we not be in a worse situation if Yeshua came to your church, your house, your meeting, whatever you call it, and he walked in, would he be pleased? Or would he think it was a worldly get-together? See, the problem is we all want to come and we want to do it our way. And we want to believe in our way. And we want to say, oh, well, you know, once he was put on the stake and we're told all this lies and garbage of what's really going on. Right? Oh, well, uh, this changed and that changed. But Yeshua himself said, think not. Think not have come to destroy the law of the prophets. Somehow the enemy and the hireling has crept in and told us, I ain't got to do this no more. It's all dancing and prancing. It's all about me. It's all about, and what happens? Move over, everybody. Here we go. We're going to do it our way. We're going to have it our way. We're going to do it the way that we want to do it. And what happens? He's not pleased. We become an abomination unto him. Let me ask you this. What is the difference, again, if you don't believe what I'm saying, what is the difference between a concert and a church service? And which one is this? Which one is this? Is this a church? Everybody's got their hands in the air. There's finger pointing. There's cell phones. That looks like they could be swaying back and forth. Looks like every church service you've ever seen, does it not? They're in the mood. They're in the emotion. There they go. It must be church, right? 
Must be the church service. It must be. Let's see. Let's take another look. Can you tell now? <clears throat> the guy's got his hands in the air. There's a keyboard. It must be a church service. They must be singing. See the problem? It's not. It's a concert. But it looks just like every church, New Age, Hillsong church you've seen. Right? Every New Age assembly because they like it so. The guy is up there singing and throwing his hands in the air and he tells you to throw your hands in the air and wave them around like you don't care and that's what people do. And for some reason, we don't know the difference, do we? But yet the scripture tells us specifically, specifically not to do this, right? Not to do it. Hillsong, they have a thing that looks like a concert. You have a concert. And what happens? Who are you praising? What God are you praising? And how are you doing it? Because the scripture says, Deuteronomy 12 and 4, Do not worship Yahweh, your Elohim, in the way these pagan people worship their gods. So the question would be here that a lot of people would even say is, they're not worshiping the God. But what does Yahweh say? Have no other gods before me. See, it's all about him. It's all about what he says. It's all about the way he wants it. We can say what we will and what we want, but this can be bringing them to being our God. Oh, come on now, right? That How do you get from this to this? Well, we have a, a show called, what, American Idol? Hmm, what are they doing on that? Singing? We go and we idolize, or people idolize who? Kenny Chestnut, Bon Jovi. I mean, it just depends on what era you're from, right? Johnny Cash, Elvis Presley, Two Chains, whoever it is, that's what people emulate. Oh, no, they don't emulate. Really? Walk down the street, walk down in certain places, and you see people wearing two chains. You see people wearing Fila shoes. You see people wearing Air Jordans. Who are you emulating? Who are you following? Who is your church following? Is it following after the worldly system? And I know people say, well, this is just because, right? This is because this is what we're getting into and this draws the people. It gets the younger crowd, but it doesn't teach them anything. You can get a bunch of people into a lot of places, but it doesn't teach them anything, right? Judges 21 and 21. And see and behold if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in dances. Then come ye out of the vineyards and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh and go to the land of Benjamin. And again, we have to go to what these words and what this dance, the H2342, is a twirl, a twist. We get in our heads because we've been taught by the world that this is what a dance is. This is what praise is. This is what it looks like. But this is what the world looks like. This is not what the assembly looks like. See the difference? This is the world's way. The assembly's way, the way of Moshe, the way of everybody else, is on your face. Now, with that being said, we have the shofar. That is a shrill. That is a shout. That is the shofar blast. That is a commandment. Now, if we go back and we go forward and we said on today and nothing has changed, of course, if you brought the Ark of the Covenant in, you should be happy. You might want to give a little shout. You might do a little spin. You might say, wow, we have brought it back. Praise Yahweh. If you go to a ball game, what do you do? What do you do at a ball game? 
Do you bring all this to the ball game? Do you say, hey, everybody, we're going to the baseball Cardinals game, and everybody needs to come in here and bring all their stuff. Please, please bring your guitars and your drums and your flutes and your microphones and bring all your stuff, and we're going to go look at the game. We don't do that. What do we do? Somebody hits a home run and yahoo, woo-hoo, yippee. That's what it looks like. Right? This is the praising of a man. This is the praising of a group. This is emotionally self-indulgence. Which very few assemblies, churches preach against anymore. It's all about bringing people in. We've sold out on doing what the scripture says to do to the concert, to the worldly way, to doing what the world wants to do. Entertainment. The definition of entertainment is amusement or diversion. A diversion from what? A diversion from your true praise. A diversion from the true king. A diversion from what you're really supposed to be doing. A diversion provided by performers. Something diverting or engaging. A public performance. Wow. I hope you have a new definition of praise and worship now. I hope you have a new definition of when you go and sit somewhere that you don't just go along with the group. The days of Noah. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also at the coming of the Son of Man. Folks, we're coming to a time where people don't listen. Listen to Noah. He's over there building. The, what is that he's building? What is he doing? What's wrong with him? It's the same thing you get today. Praise and worship? Don't tell me about no praise and worship, brother. We got it all down. We know what praise and worship is. We know about praise and worship here. We know the latest Jeremy song. We can sing some Paul Wilbur. We can, oh boy. My question to you is, why do you go to your assembly to your church? If it's really just to praise and worship, can't you turn that on in your house? Can't you sing that in your car on the way there? So if you sing that on the car on the way there, and another question behind, on top, however you want to put it with the next question is what? How do you practice praise and worship? Because almost everywhere I go to, they're practicing praise and worship songs. Almost every big assembly on Friday night, even during the week. Hey folks, let's get together on Wednesday and practice our songs. How do you practice praise and worship? How does it look? Does it go a little something like, we're going to raise our hands and we're going <laughs> to get that... <laughs> right mood for everybody do you feel it folks do you feel like crying too you know <laughs> come on feel sad your, your dog got ran over come on get in the country music song that's what it is it's an emotion it's what I just said it's an entertainment it's a performance it's a circus act and we're falling for it and we wonder why the world's in the state it's in. Because we are so worried about our getting our groove on. That's what it really is. Who is on Yahweh's side? Idolatry remains a serious problem for each of us. Exodus 32, 1, 5 through 6. Love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is not what we see, folks. This is not love. This is not caring. This is not even taking care of each other. This is a praise and worship. It's a dance-off. It's a who sings better than whoever else. Who's in the choir? Who's a part of this? We take everything we're supposed to be doing out of what we're supposed to be doing because everybody's worried about how they look. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is it, is it wrong? Yeah, I know it's wrong, but what I'm saying, okay, we leave, let's just put it in a true world scenario. We leave and we say, okay, oh, wait, 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 look here, brother, 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 I got it, 
I know that you want to get up on stage and all. No, no, I don't want you to preach or anything. I'm, next Saturday, could you sing a song? Could it be The Lighthouse? Could it be, can you sing us a song? All week long, now what are you geared towards? What am I going to wear? What tunic should I put on? What, and the women, or what, what dress looks better? Do I look, and they try the dress on three times throughout the week, right? Honey, how I look in this dress? Is this too tight? Is this too big? Is this too showing? Is this revealing just enough, not too much? What am I doing? All week long, you're taking away from talking, praying, praising, meeting, loving, caring, it's all about next Sabbath and your dress and how you look and what you're saying. And, and you got to throw something in there. You got to put you in there, right? You got to tell them about the kitty cat. You got something. You know, we had a flat tire and we got to tell them about our flat. <clears throat> There's got to be something, right? You got to put something about you in there. Who is on Yahweh's side? Refusing to take responsibility for our own sins remains a serious problem for each of us. It's not my brother or my sister, but it's me. It's me. Oh, well, I got up there, and we do things so terrible, terrible wrong, and we praise ourselves, and our vanity is so messed up that we don't know what's what. And we get up in front of the crowds and our one time to say what we need to say and praise Yahweh, why do we throw it off? How do we lose that blessing? How do we lose it? Because we get up and we talk about, oh man, I've been thinking all week long about what I was going to say here, which is a true statement. And I just didn't know what I was going to say. But I thought I would tell you about me. And me went to work. And me told people at work. And me, me, me. And 20 minutes later, everybody's like, are you going to sing or not? But they still smile and act like it's all good. Because they don't want to lose their spot. They don't want to look mean and angry because they want their spot next week to do what you're doing. And after your 20-minute me speech and you're crying and you're whining, then you sang the song about me. This little me house of mine. Me, me, me. Everybody look at me. Does my dress look good? Does my tunic look all right? How about this? Does this look okay? Is my hair perfect? I just want you all to know I went to the hair salon. They cut a little bit off so it would look good for this. Two tablets. Reconstructed text in Paleo-Hebrew. Did you know... We're supposed to be learning on the Sabbath, not prancing and dancing and doing what the heathens do. We're supposed to be learning. And until we get to the point of perfection or awful close, we need to be learning. Did you know? Because I would say probably 90 to 97 maybe even up to 99% does not realize these two tablets was written on front and back. These two tablets was this sapphire blue stone. Did you know that these two tablets are the commandments and the instructions? Which is amazing because almost everyone I run into when I talk about Wearing the headgear, wearing a head covering, wearing this, wearing seat seats. You know one of the first things they'll say? Show it to me in the Torah. Well, right back at you. Show it to me in the Torah where it says to praise and worship and dance. Show me one verse that says you're supposed to dance and prance and sing and do what you do. But you can't, can you? You have to pull it out of Psalms. You have to pull it out of somewhere else. You got to take it out of somewhere else. And it's got to be rightly fitted. But those same people that say, show it to me in the Torah, right here in Judges, is the first time we see dance. And it's a twist. 
In Job, they sent forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance, which is a stamp, a stomp, a reggae. Now let them praise his name in the dance. Oh, we found Psalms. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbre on the harp. This dance is a makel. It's a round. Praise him with the timbre on the dance. The same thing, right? The H4234, praise. How is it that we get these things, the stringed instruments and the organs, and yet not one verse tells us how to do this? Not one verse tells Moshe how to build a harp. Not one verse tells us how to build these stringed instruments. Not one verse tells us this, but it does tell us to blow the shofar. It does tell us to praise him, to have no other gods before him, to praise him. So how did we get from praising him to dancing and prancing and it's no difference? How do we get to a point again, why can we even be worried about what our dance and our prance looks like when we don't know and our children don't know these two stones are front and back? Not what we see. Why do we even promote that? Most stones you see look like this, and they're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But look at these stones. The very Torah, the very instructions, we don't even promote correctly. And we wonder why we're on the dance and prance. We're on the dance and prance because we didn't read what these stones say. We don't really comprehend the Torah. We don't really comprehend what it's saying to do. And we don't take the time to because we're too busy in our dance and trance and praise and worship and all these things. But the wild beasts of the desert shall lie there and their houses shall be full of the doleful creatures and owls shall dwell there and satyrs shall dance there. You might want to look up that verse and find that out just a little bit. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together, for I will turn their mourning into joy, and I will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. I would submit to you we have no business in rejoicing. We have no business rejoicing in the assembly of what do we have to rejoice over? I know. We got the victory. We got the victory. You got the victory of what? Have you looked outside? Do you watch the news? What victory? What are we rejoicing? Do we have the Ark of the Covenant? I want to dance like David danced. Where's the Ark? What are you dancing for? Honestly, think about that. Even if you come to the point where we're rejoicing for Yahweh, yes. We're thankful for Yahweh, yes. We're thankful, but that's what it says to do at home. The Torah says, when you wake up, rejoice. Praise. At noon, talk of the verses, the scriptures, to teach them. We don't do anything what the Bible says, and then we come and want to do a big sing-off, dance-off celebration of what? Sukkot is a celebration of thankfulness of the year, a thankfulness to Yahweh, the Creator, thankful of the food we have been given. And some of us obviously eat too much of that. But we're still thankful. But what happens? We trade off what we're supposed to be doing into the dance. I will tell you why. Because the people that are anointed... Nobody wants to hear them. There's people that say they're anointed and they call themselves rabbis, but yet the scripture clearly says, call no man rabbi. When they come and called him that, when Yeshua was called that, he said, call no man that. Why would you call me that? There's one master. But yet you get these people and they say, I'm anointed. And to hear my counseling, like there's some God. Oh, to have me counsel you, I take my counseling serious. Do you now? You take your counseling about whether you should take pills, whether you should do this, whether you should be on Prozac, and, and who's counseling who? 
They say they have anointing, but yet their fruits show there's no anointing. Their fruits show there's nothing there. It's fluff and puff. It's the world flipped upside down, handed to you as the Bible way. It's sad. It's sad to see what the world has become. It's sad to see what people are doing. It's sad to see when you're given true praise and worship. Our kids don't even know it. You go to the church down the road and you see little kids dancing and prancing. And if you ask them why, they wouldn't have a clue. Excuse me, son, why, why are you jumping all over the floor? I'm praising. Praising who? Excuse me, little girl, why are you bouncing up and down and bouncing off the floor? What are you doing? I'm doing what I was taught to do. They don't even know. But yet we call it, <clears throat> ask a grown-up. <laughs> why do you come here? I come here for the music. I thought this was supposed to be a house of prayer. Our very hallelujah. This is in the regular music anymore, folks. You hear people on TV and the radio having this and saying this word. It's in their songs. Should not be. And a lot of these so-called church people go and go right along with it. They play it. There ain't no big deal. Why? Because their praise and worship is off. They don't even know what they're doing. Blowing the shofar, screaming and shouting. What doesn't have to be programmed into you? It doesn't have to be told to you. You blow the shofar and you say, Praise be to the Creator. You come out of the doctor's office, you come out of somewhere, you get a great meal, something happens that you've just been waiting for, what do you do? Praise Yahweh. Thank you. You don't have to practice that all week. You ain't sitting there all week going, boy, I wonder what I'm going to say when the doctor tells me this. I wonder what I'm going to do when the doctor tells me this. Oh, I wonder what I'm going to do when I get my car fixed. Gee, I wonder what's going to happen when the, you know, my boat's all ready to go. I wonder what I'll say. We don't do that, do we? We're worried about when it's going to be done. We hope it's done right. But there's no comparison. My car's fixed. I can go do this trip. I can go do that. Wow. And what do we do to the person that fixed it? Do we jump up and down around them? They think we's crazy. Do we bounce around them and, and, and do the hokey pokey and, and throw legs out? Do we do that? They'd be like, what's wrong with you? There's something wrong with you? But yet we go to church and we act that way and bounce up and down. It's not even a natural thing in most cases. Blow the shofar in the key of worship. Blow the shofar, scream and shout and praise him. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you for my life. Thank you for this. And guess what? It's catching. It's catching. If you thank him for what you have instead of, oh, everything's a big old batty, 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 what happens? You start learning how to praise him. You start learning to be thankful. You start learning your breath is a gift. You start learning who made you instead of, oh, the water's always bad. Oh, my life's always terrible. Everything's always oh, 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 oh. Because that's how we live our life all week long, do we not? We live our life in the slums all week long, and then we go to church, and boy, praise and worship time now. And then we go, and all of our neighbors and everybody sees of how what we really are. I don't understand why. I've, I've told my neighbor... I'm a church goer. I told my neighbor, and I, I've testified, and I want to go tell them. And they see you out hollering and cussing and throwing things and acting just like they are. But, hey, I'm going to show them the right way. I'm going to bring them to a building and show them how to dance and sing. 
I think they can get that from MTV, from YouTube videos, right? I mean, I think there's plenty of that around. And sound the trumpet. Sound the trumpet. And it grew louder and louder, and Moses spoke, and Yahweh answered him in thunder. We don't even get what is going on, do we? He answers us in what we send to him. What we send to him is what he wants to hear. It's the only way that he will accept it. We dance and we prance and we sing and we play. And he says, your very prayer is an abomination to me. Does he not? Your very prayer is an abomination to me. Oh, we love to lift our hands. Ain't that what he says about them? They love to lift their hands. They love to be called rabbi. They love to be told high in the marketplaces in today's world, right? But the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, and Moses and Yahweh answered him in thunder. We don't even know the Creator. Most people don't even know the sound, the ways of what he accepts and what he doesn't. Because we don't even know there are 613 laws. We don't even know that those stones have written on front and back. We don't realize it took 40 days. You think it, who does it take 40 days to learn 10 things? Now sit down here, Moshe, and I'm going to teach you 10 things. And it's going to take 40 days. Really? 40 days and nights? Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not... You can say that in minutes. Right? Probably not even three minutes to say the Ten Commandments. But how long does it say, how long would it take you to learn? How long does it take to go over? About eight to ten hours. If you go over 613 commandments and you print them out and you just go over them, it takes about eight to ten hours. Hmm. So, that's just going over. You don't know them, right? You just know of them. Now you come the next day, and thou shalt not kill. Some of them you pretty much got. Okay, don't kill. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. But wait a minute, now I need to know what adultery is. Right? How many wives did Moses have? He had more than one. So that can't be adultery then. Wait a minute, I have a problem. I have a question. See, the way it's supposed to be done is exactly that. This is what Sabbath is supposed to be about. It's a day of rest, yes. But it's also a day of learning. It's a day of going and learning. Not a day of prancing and dancing and wasting your time and feeling like you're somebody special and feeling like something moved on you and in you. Something moved on you and in you. And it's that same spirit that's going to move on you and in you all through the week. But the Ruach and the voice that says don't do that, you don't know. You're too busy with the dancing and prancing. You're too busy with the jig on to worry about what was adultery again? When that person comes to work and slaps me on the backside, what do I do? Well, maybe it's that they seen you in church and they thought you wanted it. Maybe they seen your low-cut blouse and they figured, hey, you was doing the shimmy in church. What are you out? You must be worse outside of that if that's the way you are inside. Right? It's supposed to be, we come to this assembly, we read, it's a house of prayer. Call upon the elders, and the elders pray for those who are sick. Not for those who ain't ever been to church in their life. Not for those who don't want nothing to do with the church. Oh, well, pray for my Aunt Sarah. She ain't been to church 23 years. She eats pork every day. She drinks like a fish. Pray for her. She's okay. Pray for her what? Is she going to repent? Is she going to come get immersed? Is she going to, you know, it's like praying for a dog. Pray for my dog. Stop barking. He's a dog. Well, start, pray for him to stop barking. What's wrong with you? If we would think about half the stuff we do in our so-called church building, 
Would we approve of that? Would you approve of your servants going and having a party and blaming it on you? Well, I was gone. I went, you know, I went to California and I was out in Santa Barbara and I came back. My house was all in ruins. And I asked my servants and they said, yeah, we had a party. I said, what for? I don't even drink. Well, we do. And we got in there and we broke up some wine and we brought some things in and we just danced and sang. And yeah, I can see my table's broke, my TV's broke, my windows are broke. What did you do? Well, we got a little carried away and somebody fell through the window and somebody fell out and somebody passed out. Somebody hit the pew. Right? Wouldn't you be like, what happened there? What was you on? But you go to church and you see these same things. People dancing about, slamming into things, running into things. Looks like a mosh pit. They took an oath to Yahweh with loud acclamation, with shouting and with trumpets and with horns. All Judah rejoiced about the oath because they had sworn it wholeheartedly. They sought God eagerly, and he was found by them, so that Yahweh gave them rest on every side. How do we call out to Yahweh? Second Chronicles 15 and 14, it tells us. It specifically tells us what it looks like to call out, to make an oath, to praise him, to do what we should be doing. This is what Sukkot should look like, not Monopoly board games, not dancing and singing and talking about things. They took an oath to Yahweh with loud acclamation and with shouting and with trumpets and horns. I don't see any bands. I don't see any drums. I don't see a lot of other things. I see shouting, trumpets, and horns. Amazingly, the exact same things we see when we go to ball games, football games, basketball games. It comes natural. It should come very natural to us. It should come very natural. But we have to learn. What's a horn? There it is. It comes right from the animal. You take the horn and you blow it. Why? Because he says so. Because that's what he accepts. In our world, we think that we are so rebellious that we just do whatever we want and he accepts that. But in the true biblical form, Yahweh accepts what he told you to do. Right? If we go and eat a big old ham dinner and we come and we say, oh boy, we come to worship, you're unclean. Does he hear you? Does he care to hear you? You can say what you will, you can say what you want, but if we go to the scriptures and we ask him and we look at them, we see what true praise and worship is. It's a blowing of the shofar, it's a shouting, it's a rejoicing, it's a kneeling down. The true worship is kneeling down. We're going to go over here and we're going to worship him. But you stay here. It's not a look at me thing. We see it right there. The very verse, the very first one that talks about it, he's going away to worship the creator. But yet we come together to worship the Creator. Because it says, where does it say that? Forsake not to come together to dance and scream and shout. Where, where is it in Torah? Again, all these people, show it to me in the Torah. Yeah, exactly. Show me where it says to come and do this. Because we have all these verses It says, blow the shofar, blow the trumpet, shout, Praise me the way I want to be praised. Not in the way that you think it's okay. So we have to do what the Creator says the way the Creator says to do it. That's the only way to do it, folks. Any other way, we're just doing what we want to. We're going and we're dancing and we're prancing 
And as far as spiritual and the kingdom, we're not progressing. We're degressing. We're doing caveman style stuff that nobody told us to. We're going back, not forward. For nobody can lay another foundation than the one which is already there. Namely, Yeshua HaMashiach. So, there is no other foundation. Well, this is the New Testament. This is the new way. This is no. The scripture says, For nobody can lay down any other foundation other than the one which is already, namely, Yeshua. Yeshua is our foundation. Yahweh is our foundation. That's why it says a God. We don't have another way. We don't have... Even Yeshua came and said, You've made my house a den of thieves. And he specifically said it's a house of prayer. So what do we do? How do we truly worship? What does it look like then? We can get rid of the house church, the assembly church, the Sunday church, and all their dancing, prancing, concert-looking paganism. What does it really look like? Well, let's find out. And to stand every morning to thank and praise Yahweh, likewise at evening. 1 Chronicles 23 and 30. To stand every morning and to thank and praise Yahweh. And at evening. Don't say nothing about going to an assembly, going somewhere. Because if you're truly in a relationship, if we're truly in a relationship, what do we do? You don't go and tell other people, oh, guess what? Gee, what do you do? You tell that person, hey, I'm glad to see you. Hey, when can we go on a date again? Hey, tell me more about you. What are we doing in relationship with the Creator? Thank you, Father. Not thank you, crowd. Not thank you, everybody, for showing up. Hey, is this mic on? Hey, drop the mic. All that worldly garbage of look at me. Thank you, Father, for my breath. Thank you, Father, for all that I have. Thank you for letting me do this. Thanking you for sending this out. Thanking you for the people that are going to hear it. Let your word go forth and not come back void. These are his words. How do we learn to do the way we're supposed to do? We talk to him in his words, in his voice, in his scripture. What else do we have to stand on? People stand and pray and pray and pray and pray, and they're so disobedient, they don't even know what's wrong with them. I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, and disobedient from the time they get up to the time they go to bed. Maybe there's a reason why he tells us to do this. Maybe we need a lot of grace and mercy. Maybe we need to do what he says to do. Get up and praise him and thank him for what we have. First Chronicles 23 and 31. And to offer all burnt sacrifices unto Yahweh in the Sabbath, in the new moons, and on the set feast, by number according to the order commanded unto them continually before Yahweh. It's amazing we don't do this. We want to dance and sing and prance and, and all these things, but we don't want to go and bring all these offerings, right? No, we want to have chicken and chicken soup and, and the easiest chicken fingers and the easiest things we can do, but yet very few times do we want to do what the Scripture says. But we want to play church. We want to have church. But on the Sabbaths, and on the new moons, on the full moons, and on the feast days. But we don't learn. And it's because many of us have been handed down the lives of our fathers. Just like it's written. But it's time to stop and start going to anointed and to those who want to help you. Oh, everybody, come move to Tennessee. Oh, everybody, come move to Missouri. Oh, everybody, come move to Arkansas. For what? To learn what you've learned for the last 20 years, 50 years, 100 years? To go and dance and prance and do nothing? How does that help if 
Every so-called believer moves to Tennessee and goes to MTOI, and we all sit there, and the first thing says, Hello, I'm Rabbi such and such. Whoa! What did he just say? Why do we not catch that? Oh, well, because of, and, and they give us a good, nice speech about it, but you can't go with a verse. It's got to be absurdity and a wishy-washy and a wolfy-washy. And don't listen to what I'm really saying. Don't listen to the verses. Listen to me. I, I, wow, so I listen to you over the verses? I thought that's what we came out of. I thought that's what we're not supposed to do. If it matches the verses, then you listen. Hence, Yahweh gave Moshe the stones, and the stone said, written by Yahweh, what Moshe saying? You don't believe him? Read the stone. It's in Hebrew. Can you read? It's right there. It's in your Bible. Can you read what I'm saying? Are you going to throw that down and say, well, Rabbi says, which is amazing because when we go back to history, Dance in America was outlawed. What's that movie about dancing? What was that movie with Kevin Bacon where it's outlawed? Footloose? Might want to take a little gander into that movie. It was outlawed dancing you couldn't do. So you're telling me that the Hebrews all danced and pranced? No, they did not. No, they did not. Both for the showbread and for the fine flour, for the meat offering and for the unleavened cakes, and for that which is baked in the pan, and for that which is fried for all manner of measure and size. When it comes to works, we don't like to do that, right? When it comes to doing things that it says to make, we don't want to be a part of that. But we're so easily with emotional things. We're so easy to pick up some drums and pick up a guitar and bang on a piano. Why? Because we see the piano man. We see what the world looks like and we go, ooh. So the confusion sets in because if I go to church and play the guitar and I learn the guitar in church, I can always take that on the road. I can always go sing with Bon Jovi. I can always go sing with Machine Gun Kelly. Me and Nick might be boys. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. You might want to check into Isaiah thirteen twenty one and see what this is talking about. We have to be careful when we just throw up verses and we say that, you know, we want to dance like David danced because you might want to go back into Exodus, Deuteronomy, and it says to dance and praise him, to praise Yahweh, right, before the ark. David was doing what the Levites was commanded to do, to be thankful that they had the ark. It's nothing new. He was doing, and he wasn't dancing. The word dancing is not even there. It was a twirl and praising, and he was thankful. And if we just look at the verse, it says what? Again, David gathered together all those chosen men of Israel. 30,000! It's not your typical Sunday morning Sabbath service, folks. Put everything in order, and it looks like order and it sounds like order when you take it out of order and say I want to dance like David dance where's the ark are you a Levite can you be around the ark put it in order stop oh I just want to go to church and act like an idiot just call me rabbi just oh hey let's just break some more commands let's just do what we want why even have it let's Get rid of the Bible so nobody can come against what we're saying. And then you can be like everything else. And David arose and went with all the people. Now all the people was 30,000. All the people that were with him from Baal of Judah to 
bring up from thence the ark of Yahweh, whose name is called by the name of Yahweh. Hmm. So not only was he bringing the ark, he was bringing the name of Yahweh back. Somewhat important, wouldn't you think so? Of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. So people knew the host between the cherubims on the ark was Yahweh. And they set the ark of Elohim upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab and in Jebib and in Uzzah and Ohio. The sons of Abinadab drave the new cart. So had to be Levites to even be touching it and doing anything with it, right? They brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was Jeba, accompanying the ark of Yahweh. And Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before Yahweh on the manner of instruments of fir, wood, even on harps and psalteries, and on trumpets, and on cornets, and on cymbals. And when they came to the threshing floor, Nehekin's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God, and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Uzzah, and smote him there for his error. And there he died. <clears throat> and there he died by the ark of Elohim. And David was displeased because Yahweh had made a breach upon Uriah, and he called the name of the place Peziah to this day. And David was afraid of Yahweh that day and said, How shall the ark of Yahweh come to me? So David would not remove the ark of Yahweh into him into the city of David, but David carried aside into the house of Obeam, into the Jittite. Big long story about somebody died, 30,000 people, about the ark. Why do we not hear about this story, but we hear, oh, and dance like David dance. Really? You had 30,000 people? You slayed your giants? You went and found the ark? You're bringing it back? Somebody died to get it there? No, you're just going to dance like David danced. That's a child's speech. That's baby milk. You're not presenting the true story. You're presenting a baby milk story that you want to dance like a foolish person. You want to dance, and that's what most of them come to. They're dancing and prancing because David did. Where is the ark? Where's your Levites? Where's your 30,000? Where's the man that died? So when you went through all this, I think when you come out the other side and the ark was delivered, you'd have a reason to dance, right? You'd have a, and the word is not even danced, it's twirled. And if you go back to Exodus and Deuteronomy and read, they are supposed to pay homage to Yahweh before the ark. Day and night. So what are they doing? What happens? Why? Because you fear Yahweh. You know if you touch that ark, you're going to die. But in some misconnect, somehow, all the rabbis and hirelings and wolves and whatever they call themselves has disconnected that whole sermon, that whole Bible verse, Second Samuel 6, and turned it into a soundbite of <gasps> dancing. How audacious is that? How audacious David might spit in your face for saying that. 30,000 people, a man died. The problem is we come to a point where the G4205, the pornos, the pornos. You know what that means? You know, everybody looks at the porno and everybody goes crazy about the porno. What is that? To sell male prostitution, a diaboski, a whoremonger. 
That's what you have. You might think it's, oh, but really, when you get on stage and your little men and women have on their little tight, tight, lustful things, that's what you're permitting. That's what your church is saying, that we freely adopt pornos here. We freely adopt people having performances. It's an entertainment. All the things I just showed you and the definition of entertainment is what? To get you away from the truth. Entertainment is to keep you, is to set your mind off of. Is it not? Think about it now. When you watch something, what are you doing? You're getting your mind away from truth. You're getting your mind away from your life. You're setting aside time to pass it, to just basically throw it out. To say, I'm going to sit here and watch this, and this 30 minutes is me time. Correct? This video game is me time. I'm going to take an hour or two or whatever, and I'm going to do this. It's basically nothing good for anybody. But you're taking time to yourself to accomplish your feelings and your goals. I'm going to sit here and beat this game. And when I beat this game, I have accomplished something. I beat the game. You've done something. You didn't just sit there and, you know, bubble your lips. You've actually actively beat a game. You've actually watched a movie. You've actually done this. But the equation of it all... What you're really doing is entertaining self. Right? Entertaining self is not praising. Praising, David danced, David twirled, because first of all, before the ark, you're supposed to give homage to Yahweh. You're supposed to be fearful of Yahweh. You're supposed to thank Yahweh. Why? Because he's given us the commandments. He's given us the bud. He's given us the manna. He's given us life. He's given us truth. He's given us water. He's given us everything to survive on. So before you so freely jump out there and say you want to dance like David danced, know what it cost him. And know that he was afraid. And know what was going on. Folks, we have to be very careful when we just turn everything into a mockery. It's really, if you looked at it in the eyes of Yahweh, you, you might look at it completely different. I hope you look at it completely different after this. I hope the next time someone says he's a rabbi, you can say, no, the scripture says, Yeshua said. Call no man rabbi. I hope the next time somebody says, oh, we can get up and prance and dance, that you understand, look up the definition of entertainment. It says amusement or diversion provided by a performer. And that's what most of your dancing and what is called praise and worship is. It's a diversion from the truth. Sadly, that's all it really is. When you break it down, when you bottom line it, it's a diversion of we're supposed to come on the Sabbath day. We're supposed to learn. We're supposed to ask questions. We're supposed to say, but what if I dance like this? Is that okay? Well, no, unless it's a free coming out of you. Thank you. You got out of the hospital. Your sister didn't die. Your dad's okay type of thing. You now know something. You're in Sukkot. You have learned it's Sukkot and why. And the Messiah was born on Sukkot. He tabernacled amongst us. It's all about learning. What do you do with your children? Throw them outside and say, go outside and dance all day. You'll get it. And then 12 years later, what is wrong with this child? They don't know anything about nothing. But they know how to dance. Wash me completely from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. What are we being cleansed from? If everything is truly dancing, prancing, and singing, what do we need to be cleansed from? 
We need to be cleansed from our sin. We need to be cleansed from our ways. We need to be cleansed from our very emotions. Because when we're not, what happens? What happens when we're left to our emotions? We do what we want to do. Again, it's amazing that very few people want to do what he says to do. They wouldn't even listen to the word. That's why most of your churches have this so-called praise and worship. How long, Elohim, shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme your name forever? This weekend, people are going to go and get together, and probably already have, and will get together tomorrow on the first day, and they will go and say what name. They go and proclaim that he is risen. They go and proclaim all these things, and they will dance and search for their eggs and do all these abominational things, claiming it was who? Their God told them to do it. Their God's chosen victory. Their God's done this. How long, Elohim, shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Blaspheme a name is what? Making it not. Not pronouncing it. Not saying it. Instead of coming to Yahweh, instead of saying Yeshua, it's not English, folks. Because in 1611, there was no J guy in there. Right? It might surprise you that all these things, what was really going on? Now, again, before we close up, let's learn a little more, shall we? David was also wearing an ephod when he danced before Yahweh with all his might. What did the priest wear? Linen ephods. Go right back to Deuteronomy. When somebody tells you something and you can't find it in the Torah, you can't find it in Deuteronomy, Exodus, Leviticus, you might go, hmm, I wonder why. Right? 2 Samuel 6 through 14. David wearing a linen ephod danced before Yahweh with all his might. And again, it is the twirl. You have to look up the Hallel, the Barak, Judges 5 and 2, H1288, Barak, to kneel to bless Yahweh. Right? We have to know of what we're talking about. Again, we don't want to go and run on this. How many times you went to church and they said, Oh yeah, you're right. Let's go have them burnt sacrifices into Yahweh in the Sabbath and the new moon. How many places even have a Sabbath or a new moon? The set feast by number according to the order commanded unto them continually before Yahweh. Most people are lost right here. Sabbath keepers, been Sabbath keepers for 10 years, been in for 5 years, been in for 3 years. Well, how about we go and we do what it says to do? What are you talking about? What new moon? What do they do? They go and look at, most of them look at the wrong moon, look in the wrong direction. Right? What? When, when are we ever commanded to look west? Look east, look up. Look up, look east. Almost every time we look, it's either look up or look to the east. Look to the eastern sky. Look to the eastern sky. But yet, over and over and over, they're looking west. Not commanded anywhere. But hey, you know, we're going to do it our way. We're going to send up that praise and worship. We're going to do it our way. And sadly, some of them will just flat out tell you he has to accept that. He will accept that. That's the way it's supposed to be. It's a shame, is it not? Yahweh forgive us for even participating in such nonsense and such abominable things. Because again, it's written. They raise their hands and their very prayer is an abomination to me. But yet we see them out there doing the same way as the world does it. Let's allow scripture to reveal and to teach us how religion and those we trusted deceives us for thousands of years. It's not an overnight thing. This has been going on for years. 
and it keeps getting worse. As I said, in America, look it up, you could not dance in France and act that way. This is most, sadly, most of these things that we do and say and celebrate, December 25th, their little bunny party, all this pagan stuff you couldn't do 200 years ago. You'd be considered a witch. They'd want to burn you at the stake. As I live, declares the Master Yahweh, call one man, call one, no man, right? Get it right. Call no man. As I live, declares Master Yahweh, which that Master Rabbi, same words, declares Master Yahweh, because my flock became a prey and my flock became food for every beast of the field from not having a shepherd. Oh, but they call themselves shepherds. They call themselves pastors. They call themselves deacons. They call themselves rabbis. And my shepherds did not search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves. Wow. That not sound like almost every church you ever been to and almost every assembly you ever been to? What do they do after, before, during? Coffee, donuts, food, food, food. Got some chicken if you're hungry. Fed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus said the Master Yahweh. Notice he's claiming that title that he said, Call no man. Thus says Rabbi Yahweh, Master Yahweh, See, I am against the shepherds, and shall require my flock at their hand, and shall make them cease feeding the sheep, and the shepherds shall feed themselves no more. And I shall deliver my flock from their mouths, and they shall no longer be found for them. Ezekiel 34, 8 through 10. All these people that they're getting their homage now, they're getting their people moving to them now, they're getting everything they want now, but they're going to have to answer to the Creator. All these people that call themselves rabbi and oh me, 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 and I'll counsel you and they act like they're some kind of a God with their counseling. We better listen up. We better listen to what so say the Yahweh. Folks, we can no longer step back and do what the world does. We cannot call ourselves followers of Yeshua. We cannot call ourselves followers of Yahweh. We can't call ourselves Torah keepers. Not honestly, if we're doing what the world does. If the world can't tell us from the world, how do we think the Creator is? We're doing things that the world does and we're stamping assembly, church, Torah, the way, and it's a package that goes nowhere. You might be fooling the world. They might think, oh yeah, that's cool. And you might be saying, oh yeah, that's how we get them to come. But this is not the way Yahweh says. Over and over, we see what we're supposed to do. And we see what we're not supposed to do. We either do it the way that Yahweh says to do it, or we're just abomination. So we have to listen to the Creator. We have to listen to what He says. We have to do what He says the way He wants it done. If you go to anybody's house, if you're respectful, you'll listen to the rules. If you want to be around them, if you want to have a relationship with them, they say, take your shoes off, whether you like it or not, you take your shoes off. If they say don't drink, you won't drink. If they say don't smoke pot, don't smoke. I don't care what the law says. I am. Look, it's my house, my rules. Yahweh's kingdom, Yahweh's rules, Yahweh's commandments, Yahweh's stones, handed to Moshe, teach them diligently. Anything else, we're just trying to play church. It feels great emotionally. I know, I've been there, done it singing and prancing and dancing. Oh man, it feels great. It's nothing like a crowd before you, but that's the world. Nothing like a crowd up there. Man, they think I'm awesome. 
I can't believe this many people. Oh, wow. Looky here. But instead, we should be saying, all these people could be getting the truth. All these people could be knowing Yahweh. All these people, how many people come to this as opposed to somebody coming to hear the word? <laughs> you ever tried it? Hey, come and hear the preaching. <laughs> what? I, uh, I can read my Bible. Hey, come and hear this group's going to be. Jeremy Camp's going to be. Oh, this one's going to be. Oh, boy. And people flock, flock, flock to it. Do they not? Oh, man. Can I get in there free? Can I come free? Oh, no. But yet, why is it that we are this way? Because we've been taught this way. And because that Hollywood in us, right? That Hollywood Hulk Hogan in us just wants us to do that way, right? We want to be that way. We want to be that guy. We want to be that woman. That's emotion. So I hope this is edified. I hope you have learned what true worship and praise, the hallow, the celebration, the praising, the blessing, the kneeling before Yahweh, the praising the Creator, even during a twirl, right? To thank Him for what He has done. And there's nothing wrong with being happy. There's nothing wrong with being telling a little bit of jokes. There's nothing wrong with doing these. But it's all in appropriation. Right? You don't go to the doctor and go to the chemotherapist and start joking out everybody and, and start, hey, that hair is, oh wow, I wish you had your hair, want a wig? be very inappropriate, right? Everybody there would be gasping. So why do we go to the assembly of the Most High Yahweh, the house that he says is a house of prayer, and do anything else but learn and pray? It's almost absurd, is it not? It's an absurdity when you really look at it, of what it's became and what we see. And the reason the world runs to it, because it's the world. The world loves the world. But what does that make you? If you're assembly, if you're really the assembly, and the world has just taken over, now you're what? The world, right? If something comes and takes over your house, someone comes and buys your place, it's not yours anymore, it's theirs. If the world comes and creeps in and takes over your so-called assembly, well, that can never happen here because, uh-huh. Guard the Sabbath days. Guard His commandments. Guard and do them. Right? So again, I hope it's helped. I hope it's edified. I hope you know the difference now between praise and worship and what it's supposed to be and what David really did and why he did it and stop saying that without knowing Right? There's a difference saying things, but then once you know it, stop saying it. And those people who are saying it, that's been in this for 20 years, should have read that verse. I'm sure somebody, I hope somebody, came to them and said, Do you really know what that verse means? Right? So until next time, may Yahweh bless you, may His continent shine upon you, and may He grant you shalom. Shalom, everybody. Thank you very much for listening and for watching. If you would, share it and live it so until next time read those scriptures know what it says and true praise and worship is praising yahweh hallelujah thank you father for all that you've done for us for your word going forth and for doing what you said you would do but we have to do what he says to do to be his children shalom everybody and thank you for watching Shalom and Yahweh bless.